In lesson objective one, we learned about some organelles that are within cells. And if you remember, organelles are structures of specific jobs or little organs. You were looking at each organelle, what it looked like, so you were drawing it, writing its function, deciding if it was in plant, animal cells, or both, and then came up with an analogy, or you wrote down my analogy, to help you understand its job. We're going to add on the second batch now. The endoplasmic reticulum is also called the ER, and there's two kinds. You can see, so here's the nucleus in purple of the cell. Around the nucleus is attached the rough ER, or the RER, it's abbreviated sometimes. The RER has these little studs, which are ribosomes, and if you remember from part one, ribosomes are used to make proteins. So the rough ER actually helps make and package proteins. The smooth ER works more with lipids, or fats, and steroids, which are a lipid-based molecule. Both types of cells have the ER. For an analogy, you can think of either a manufacturing plant, because we're making and storing things, just like a company that manufactures materials would, or like a highway, because if you look from the nucleus, it kind of looks like a maze branching out, that materials come out of the nucleus and go straight to the ER for transport. The cell wall is a form of extra protection in maintaining the shape of the cell. You find this in plant cells only. In the picture below, it's this lighter green color. The plasma membrane still runs along the inside. You're seeing the cell wall on the outside. An analogy would be like the walls of a house. Very sturdy, very rigid, giving extra protection to whatever is inside. A chloroplast is an organelle that takes the sun and turns the energy of the sun into glucose, also known as sugar. So you're seeing a cutaway. It just looks like a round disc. Only plants have chloroplasts, and that's why plants are green. Chloroplasts are for photosynthesis. So many living things that are green have chloroplasts and can do photosynthesis. Not always, but you have certain algae and bacteria that will have chloroplasts in them and can do photosynthesis like a plant. An analogy, this is like a solar panel, again, taking the sun's energy and turning it into something else. Central vacuole is not always directly in the center of a cell, but it's a place for storage, and in plant cells, it's huge. In animal cells, they do have some vacuoles, but they're very, very small. So we're mostly going to say here that for the central vacuole, we're only talking about plants. An analogy, it's like a storage unit. You could go get a pod, and if you can't fit all the stuff from your house in your house, you could store it and then have that elsewhere. Here we have storage from the organelles that can't fit everything in with them in the central vacuole. Cilia and flagella are both for movement. Cilia, you can see in the picture at the bottom middle, looks like hairs, whereas flagella are these long little twisty like whips. Both types of cells, plant and animal, have them, so think sperm, have flagella. An analogy is like it's a propeller, it's for movement. Vesicles. Vesicles are like little bubbles. You can see here, here, here's a couple. They're for transporting things around the cell. Both types of cells have this. And a good analogy is to think of them as taxi cabs. You pack them up with what, or UPS trucks. You pack them up with things and then they drive around the cell. Not really, but an analogy here. Drive around the cell and drop off the materials where they need to go. Centrioles. Centrioles are used for cell division, and they're used to help organize chromosomes, or the DNA of the cell, in order to divide the cell's information in half. Only animal cells have centrioles. They're very, very tiny little tube-like structures. You can think of these as a puppeteer. They kind of hook chromosomes up on strings and then pull them the way they need to go, just like somebody with a puppet would pull on the strings and make the puppet do what they want it to do. Lastly, we have the cytoskeleton. This provides structure. Up in the top, you can see this diagram just shows all these fibers going all different directions. The bottom is an actual bunch of cells that were radioactively dyed. So you can see the green parts where the cytoskeleton is. All types of cells have this. And an analogy, it's like our skeleton. It helps, helps give us structure and support. Let's take a look at that website that we saw in L01, except this time I'm going to click on the plant cell instead of the animal cell. Going in the same order as your notes. First, the endoplasmic reticulum, right down there. So that 
what it's surrounding is the nucleus, and you can see that there's something right here that's much larger than the nucleus, that's the vacuole. The nucleus right here, we learned about in the last video, is remember what holds the DNA. So endoplasmic reticulum is hanging out right around the nucleus. We have the cell wall, which is this outer, which is highlighted in purple or maroon or brown or whatever color it looks like to you right now. Layered inside of there is the plasma membrane that we learned about in the last video. So cell wall helps give structure and shape. Chloroplasts in plant cells only are right here, your little solar power plants. The central vacuole which stores things is right here in the center, it's very large. Now this one doesn't have cilia and flagella, I'm going to go to the bacterial cell in a little bit to show you where those would be at. Vesicles. They don't show them in here, but you would have little bubbles kind of floating around. These are all different things here, peroxisomes and ribosomes, but vesicles you would see as little circles moving things around inside the cell. Centrioles aren't in plant cells, and I don't believe they had it on the animal cell one, so I can't show you in there. You'll have to look that up for your picture that you're drawing. And cytoskeleton, they're not showing that in here either. Here's a bacterial cell. And remember I mentioned that cilia and flagella are for movement. In this case, here is the flagella of the bacteria will allow it to move. Plants and animal cells have these as well. Not all cells, but some of them do. Your assignment is to continue and finish up your cell drawing. So, so far you've decided if it's a plant or animal cell, you have your cell on the page, you've been drawing in organelles, now draw in the rest of your organelles. However, if you've been drawing a plant cell, don't give it centrioles because plant cells don't have centrioles. So again, be careful. Location and size are important. Label the organelles as you go color it neatly, make sure your name is on the back, and turn it in. When you're done, there's a worksheet that's in the crate. Go get that, finish that up, turn it in, and then continue on in your note packet.